Right, Mr. Palmer here. Uh, next series, video in the series on uh, data structures. So we've got two D arrays. All right, for my students to keep telling me to go and put some music in the background, I suggest you go and what get some music. So I'm recommending for you today, Black Star feature in common track called Respiration. I like it. So big question: Can you define and use two dimensional arrays? Obviously, over here I'm talking about two dimensional arrays, but you can have multi dimensional arrays going upwards okay to whatever number of dimensions you want to use okay so if you remember basically an array is a collection of data that's all of the same type okay so it's just an identifier that ports to a memory location where you are storing multiple values okay um, each element in the array is referenced by indexing and the entire array is declared all at once uh, because they're all of the same data type obviously uh, you can kind of predict the memory requirements of your application unless your data array is storing strings obviously okay so here's an example of a 1d array declared in java so the string cars is a new string five so there's five elements uh car zero equals kia you can see cars four equals deu so i've stored something in the first and last elements uh with a zero based index when you have a string when the length is five the final element is always going to be four because the index is one less than the maximum okay so bear that in mind when I show some uh, algorithms later on in this uh, video. So um, when I do that string cars equals new string five, okay, you're declaring that array of uh, five elements. What does that actually look like in the memory? Okay, basically, if I just imagine my program where I've got this cars, I've got that identifier, that identifier is pointing at a memory location, which is, you know, or a series of memory locations, contiguous memory locations, where I'm storing this data, all right? Um, if I had a 2D array and I wanted to store the first names of 20 students, obviously I could just declare it the same way, string names equals new string 20. All right. Don't forget that students don't only have first names. It goes, that follows from many different kinds of, uh, uh, many different groups of data that you want to store. You want to store multiple items of data, related data together. Okay. Cause maybe I want to store last names and I want to store gender and I want to store their address or whatever it is, dietary requirement, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So we might want to use a two-dimensional array. So if I want to create a 2D array, I'll do something like this. String, and I've got the double bracket, double bracket, you can see. Student names equals new string. And there I'm giving the dimensions, okay? The rows and the columns is one way of visualizing it. So basically what we're creating is something that looks like this, where we've got 20 rows going down and we've got the two columns going across. And so I can basically store the first name in the first column and the second name in the, sec in the second column, all right? Um, that's one way of visualizing it. Actually, what does that really do? All right, I've got my student names identifier in my program that's pointing at the memory location, which has got the 20 uh, um, rows, but each of those actually points at individual multi uh, arrays, okay, which are somewhere else in the memory. All right, uh, so basically, if you don't remember, the memory is. Uh, is linear okay in that sense that you just got um we start at the first memory address and you just go onwards from there the mailboxes just go in a linear fashion okay so actually when i create uh, a multi-dimensional array what i'm doing is i'm creating a single dimensional array and then each of those elements in the single dimensional array will point at another multi-dimensional array somewhere else in the memory uh, where those consecutive values for um, that row if you want to imagine the row of the array are stored okay so if i had that 2d array where i wanted to store student names how would i store my surname okay if i was storing it in the first row i would basically have um student name well let's see this is for my first name so student name zero zero equals yatish so basically there i am shoving it into uh, the first element in the array okay remember that's the first row of that single dimensional array which is actually pointing at another one dimensional array somewhere else in memory where I'm actually we're storing those locations that storing the data. Alright? 2D arrays operate in the same way as 1D arrays. If you want to extract data, you can just print it out, like I've got that system that print line for Java. Um, you can use it as a normal variable where you can just extract data from it where some variable equals the coordinates of that element in the array, XY. Okay. You could do something the other way around where you could say array x, y equals and whatever value you want to put into there. Okay. 
uh, if you want to determine the length of the array uh, in Java you do array name bracket dot length and I'm sure there is pretty much there is something similar in pretty much every language that you use it in okay remind remember that when I said um, the single the 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 row count basically points at another one dimensional array which is storing the the actual columns of data so basically if you want to work out how many columns you've got going across you need to do array name zero dot length for example so that would actually go to the element number zero and then work out how many elements there are in that second array that you're storing the data to give you the column count so if i have um that array that I showed you previously, which was student name 020. If I do student names dot length, sorry, I student names 22. If I do student names dot length, I get 20 because that's how many rows I wanted. But if I do student names 0 dot length, I get 2 because that's how many columns I wanted to put in. So putting that into um, context, okay? When you have a one dimensional array, when you wanted to loop, go through the array efficiently, you use a loop because you say for i equals zero to length minus one, print array i. Remember I'm doing length minus one over here because the uh, array index starts at zero. So if the array length is eight, I want to stop at array seven. If I don't, then I'll, I'll get an index out of bounds error because I'll fall off the bottom of the array. So a similar application can be used for a two dimensional array. Remember I've got rows going down and then I got the kind of columns going across so basically I can have an external loop for i equals 0 to length minus 1 and then I can have an internal loop which is j equals 0 to one of the one dimensional rows dot length minus 1 so basically I can go to length minus 1 going down and length minus 1 of the column count and then I can print out i and j and that will basically the internal loop will go 0 1 2 3 4 the ex and then the external loop will increment and then so then I'll go to print array 10111121314 increment the external loop again to 2 and I'll be able to loop through my ex uh, total array okay um, I hope that makes sense uh, because by now then you should be able to define and use two dimensional arrays thank you very much